Welcome to Stuck in My Mind podcast, the show where we dive into the mind of a regular guy on his road to self discovery. You'll hear everyday people just like you share the latest topics, personal stories, and things they've learned along the way. And now, please welcome your host, Wise. And welcome to another episode. I am your host, W-I-Z-E, and I have a very special guest on the show. He's a children's book author. I can't wait to speak to him. Welcome to the show, Brian Frederick. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Oh, man, it's doing great, doing great, man. I'm excited to speak to you. Excellent. Oh, listen, I'm, I'm all about the kids, man, and and you being a children's book author, I have I have a lot of nieces and nephews. I have my grandsons out there, so definitely, definitely interested in, in what what kind of books you're you're writing for these kids out there. Yeah, excellent, cool, cool, cool. Um, well, should, shall I just dive in, or, or how how would you like me to carry well, on? Oh, uh, let's let's it's, all right, Brian. Let's tell them where you're from. Oh, uh, you're well, from? I'm I'm talking to you from Bristol. Um, and that's in the southwest of England, about 100 miles west of London. Um, but you can probably tell I'm not English. Um, I'm, I'm Irish. I was, uh, I was born in Northern Ireland. Um, so I've, I've been in England about 30 years, but um, uh, it's weird. Um, if, if I go home, people think I've, I've become, I, I sound very English. <laughs> but over here, they still think I sound very Irish. So it's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, uh, but I'm I'm in Bristol. That's where I am. Cool, cool. So your children's book, what were they about? Um, well, uh, the the children's books that are out now are about um, Siggy the sausage dog, and um, Siggy is a a kind of a just a lovable um, innocent little character who um who basically sees the good in the world and, and just wants to to help people and and um and do his best and and be nice and um uh, i guess all the things that you want your own child to to be when they're good um that's uh that's the books at the moment so siggy is is the main character um he can talk but only to people who have a little bit of magic in them to hear him, otherwise he he just barks, and that's what that's what normal people hear. Um, and we have that little bit of magic in the books. There's there's some fairies. Um, the the whole little world that I've created came out of a, a slightly different. It came a little bit from the the left of of the Siggy books. Um, the little incident that that happened to me sort of incited all of this during lockdown. Um, so the idea of fairies and things going back um my background i'm a, i'm a lawyer by profession um and i i mediate commercial law stuff so um when i always thought about being a writer i i'd figured i would write adult books and you know more serious stuff um but during lockdown when we were all sitting at home um these little girls in our neighborhood decided that that everybody was sad and needed cheering up, um, and they started to um, to leave little bouquets that they handmade these tiny little bouquets of flowers, and they rang the doorbell and and, and ran away and hid. And um, then I uh, I sensed the game that they wanted to play. I, I'm not sure the neighbors did. Um, so we started to have a, a little conversation. You know, a few times a week they'd come around and do this, and um, they and I decided that they were the flower fairies, is what we used to call them. And um, I went out walking. We've got, if you could see that way, I've got some woods just behind the house, and um, so I went walking in the woods as as everyone did. You know, trying to <laughs> trying to keep your head together during lockdown, and um, I began to think about. A story that involved the flower fairies um, and I wrote that and I got so far with it and, and sometimes these things sort of come to a, a bit of an impasse um, that's what happened to this book but my main character is called Phyllis in that book um, and 
I decided that she had this little sausage dog um, as her dog. And one day, it basically, Siggy spoke to me and uh, <laughs> we sort of decided we'd write his story instead when we were stuck. Um, and then then I wrote, uh, I've written five or six of, of Siggy's stories now, um, although only one of them, actually, I lie, two, two of them are released. Um, one is the main book, Siggy Loves Sausages. Um, and the other is called When Siggy Met Phyllis. So I was trying to riff on When Harry Met Sally. Um, and uh, it was intended as a sort of a, a lead in. Um, so I intended it as a free book that I would have on my website, which it is. So if anyone thinks that this sounds interesting, they can get a free book on my website. Um, but um, when I tried to give it away, a lot of people actually wanted to buy it as a real book. So I actually created it as a real book as well now. So I've got two books um, where I, I really only intended to have one. But um, we're, we're starting to create the second book um, next week. And I'm not sure if there's time, but I have written a Christmas book. I don't know if there's time to to create that and get it out in time for Christmas this year, but we'll see. Never know. Maybe just put it out there. It might, it might just, yeah, something might just surprise you. you. You never know. You never know. It's kind of a weird Thank process. You. My... my um, Illustrator lives in in Bali, so um, just like us having the the time difference, where you're you're in the early afternoon and I'm in the early evening here. Um, my my illustrators, it's really weird. Do you, you you'll be so used to this now, man. But um, <laughs> I'm still getting used to being the wrong way round. So when I when I point where I think is right. So I still win. I still I still win. Know what I still win. Know what direction you're in. Uh, well, I'm <laughs> make a difference. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm doing it again. I can't do it. The other way from you, um, about eight hours, is my illustrator. So I, I have this weird thing where um, I, I have to juggle when I'm doing stuff with her. Um, she's she's from Hungary, but she lives in in Indonesia. So um, yeah, it, it's it's. Um, you know, it's 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 a great world we live in. The, the the way that we're able to connect all over the place. You know, you're absolutely right. I've had some great, great experience. With, I've met some wonderful people from across the pond. Um, and I've had I recently re released a couple of episodes. I released one with um a, a guest of mine. She was in Italy. She was an amazing guest. I had a great time speaking oh, to her. Yes. And um, and I've had people from India, from all over the world. I've had a couple people. I have someone from China, from Hong Kong, someone from Japan, and it's just it's been amazing. Like the in, the internet has its issues, it does, sure, but it also has its perks. It's it's made the world so much smaller that we can be able to interact with people across the world. No, that's definitely true. It's definitely true. I mean, it's it's an age of privilege, really, isn't it? That that we we were able to do this. Especially if you know, if, if you look back, it's not even. I mean, I'm I'm not sure. You're you're younger than me, I think, wise. Um, but I was. You would I be surprised. Up. You would be surprised. <laughs> I'm a '70s baby. <laughs> ah, well, I'm, I'm. I was a '60s child for for 26 hours. Um, so really, I'm a '70s kid as well. Um, but I like oh, to yeah. say that until somebody pointed out that um, that that makes me effectively. I've I've lived through. This number of decades, and when I turned fifty, um, uh, just a year and a wee bit ago, um, somebody pointed out that I was in now in my seventh decade, and then that sounded very bad. <laughs> this, this little fingernail in the sixties has cost me a whole decade. Oh no! Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so well, you 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 remember then? You know, we 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 grew up in a, in an age where the internet didn't exist and mobile phones didn't exist, and um, I mean, even even computers really didn't exist. You know, nobody had personal computers or type 
thing. No, just just whoever. If you had money, you had a personal computer, not yeah. not us poor yeah. folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people that didn't have money, we didn't have personal computers. No, no, no. I mean, I wonder. You know, that kids, kids today. It sounds it sounds like it makes makes me sound so old if I say that. But uh, you know, they 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 just. Um, it's really weird, you know, when, when, when you think about stuff like that, you know, the way that you must appear to, to young people today talking like this, um, you sound exactly like your parents did. I, I don't know if, um, if if you had this in your house, but um, when, when I was a kid, my parents had no idea how to use the VHS. And if, if they wanted to record something, a program it i'd have to do that because they just what's this it was the program yeah you you knew all that like i yeah, knew i'm the one who had to wire everything I, every time we got a vcr or something i was the one who had to wire it and and set up the set up the surround sound whatever whatever it was that you needed to get done in your house i was that person because of course your parents weren't tech savvy they didn't understand yeah. this it, it was just basic they didn't they just didn't know, they didn't know all these other other uh it was different for them it was just like it's just like how technology must be seen to certain people our age now when they try to deal yeah. with with certain aspects of um of technology no, ab absolutely i i have um i've sort of been coerced <laughs> into uh into getting onto social media um because um apparently as an author i need an author platform so um I've been trying to. I've, I've stayed away from Twitter and, and Instagram, and, and those are probably old hat and I really for, for lots of people. But um, oh well, Instagram, yeah, um, Instagram is still big. You still, I'm, I'm not. I've never been a Twitter guy, but I've actually built up my Instagram following. I've gotten a couple of ambassadorships because of my Instagram following. Excellent. So I'm, I've built. I've built that up, and but. Yeah, you have to you have to do you have to do social media. That's why I started doing video. It, yeah. um, I had a guest on a couple of weeks ago, and they were branded marketers, my brand specialists and strategists and all that. And when I told them, "Oh yeah, I don't do video," they're like, "What? No, boy, you need to do video." And I said, "Okay, record." And they said, yeah. "They go, see, you're coachable. That's this. That's the first step that you're coachable. <laughs> you're able to to do something when." So since then, I've been recording every, every episode. Oh, excellent. It's funny because I'm, I'm quite new to, to podcasting at all, and um, I'd always thought podcasts were just audio, so I was quite relieved because, you know, I could sit here and, <laughs> and you know, You don't worry. understand how much it changes. It hurts me like, like, how much yeah. it hurts me now that I have to, that I've decided to do video as well because, like, before I could sit here, in like my boxer shorts and something in a t-shirt and record. Yeah. <laughs> but now that I'm transitioning to video and stuff like that, I have to be somewhat, <laughs> I can still sit in the boxer shorts because they don't see from, they'll see only the top up. But, That's right. We're, yeah. we're probably both sitting here in our boxer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we look but good. That's how it was. Like, I think last, sometime last year, before I went back to work, that's so what I probably wore a, T-shirts and, and sweatpants all day, every day. And to yeah. go outside, it's like I, I would go outside and I, I live in mountains in Pennsylvania. So oh, I'm nice. a city boy, but now I live in the mountains of Pennsylvania. And so I was able to go outside and enjoy the fresh air and walk around because it's not like in the big cities where there's so many people on top of each other. Like yeah. me and my neighbors have our space. So we were able to. So I was able, I, I didn't really go that crazy inside the house uh, well uh, that sounds good plus to me. i also found podcasting plus i also found podcasting and that helped me release a lot of frustrations and being able to connect with people and talk to people so yeah oh definitely it's it was it's it's great it's it's lovely to be here and talking to you i must say but what 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 makes a lawyer go write children's book that, that surprised uh, well, me. It's a it's a good question, isn't it? Um, I mean, when I was younger, I I I loved reading and I I loved writing as well. And then, for me, um, I, I think this happens to a lot of kids. Um, the the sort of composition and the 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 creative aspect of 
of English sort of started to go out the door when when exams became more important and it became more about critiquing uh, critiquing books rather than reading them just for fun. Um, so I began to fall out of love with that a little bit. And, um, and then I just got sidetracked, I suppose, advised that, you know, being a lawyer is a, a great thing to do. You know, you, you, you write well, so, you know, you, you can, I mean, to some extent, lawyers are sort of wordsmiths too. Um, and anyway, cut a long story short, that's what I ended up doing because people had convinced me it was a good idea, but I never loved it. Um, and then I, I ended up being a litigation lawyer, which, which I absolutely hated um, because you have to be a really argumentative sort of person to enjoy doing that because that's what you're doing. You're fighting with people the whole time and you'd be surprised, but even behind the scenes, how, how petty <laughs> litigation lawyers can be sometimes. Um, and I, I, that's not really me. So I ended up um, getting into mediation instead of litigation. And, and I always felt as a mediator, I was more like an anti-lawyer um, because where where litigation lawyers make their money by keeping the fight going, um, when the mediator steps in, it's all about trying to to bring people out of the trenches and make them reframe stuff for them, and to some extent, to try to give them a little shake and and say, you know, what are you doing with your life? Your life is precious. You know, every day that goes past, you're in this turmoil, and and you could leave it behind. You know, today we can come to a settlement. You can leave, you can go out the door without the weight on your shoulders and get on with your life, see your kids, see your wife, go on holiday, enjoy the life that you've got, you know, and, and I, I decided that how I would try and frame stuff for people in mediation was, was essentially about happiness. Um, and I, I think that that's what put me in the headspace that when these little girls came along, um, during lockdown, and I wasn't doing much mediation because it's a, it's, although we're talking on Zoom, well, it's not Zoom, is it? But a Zoom type platform, um, and you can do mediation like this. Um, it's a face to face business, I, I find, because it's it's really you're you're trying to build trust on a, such a deep level with the people um, that they they have to see all your ticks and and feel you know really feel you that you're you're sincere about wanting to help them and you're listening to them and all of that um and that's so much better face to face so i wasn't really doing that work and and um then the the little girls got an idea going and um and then i find that i uh, you know i was writing children's books like i said i never thought i'd write children's books but i find that i enjoyed it a lot and, and i felt um this little message of, of, of making a happier world um, as a sort of an overarching idea with there's going to be a series of books. Um, I, I don't know if they'll be very successful, who knows, but um, but it made me a, <laughs> it made me a happier human being to think that I, I could create these little worlds and, and um, so far all the kids that have read them have, have loved it. So that that just gives me more than than being a lawyer ever did, except for the money, maybe. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I feel you because since I started podcasting and I've been able to to put out the content that I'm putting out that I feel like if I help one person with whatever I put out, I did what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And I've had people reach out to me and tell me, hey, I, this episode I listened to was amazing. It helped me decide this, this, and this. And to be able to have people reach out to you and tell you that, that's a great feeling. Like, I didn't know I was, I would fall in love with being behind the mic. I really didn't. I didn't know this is not something I've, I see. I, I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't start out in radio. I've never been into music and none of that. And this is just something I decided to do as a, as a yeah. hobby with a friend in 2019, which we never got to do. And then, we get hit with the pandemic and I just decide to just press record and I released my podcast. Yeah. And once I really started talking, it was like, wow, I have a voice. I can do this. 
let's yeah. do this. And, and, and that's what I did. I just, and, and now just being able to speak to this pe- people that I speak to, just being able to share their stories or if they might have a, a, a nugget that might be beneficial to me or to someone who's listening or, cause it's also me learning and, and me growing as a person speaking to the people that I speak to. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> I, 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 I feel what you're saying as well. It's, it's, it's exactly how I feel about the writing, you know, um, it, it is about touching people and, and, um, I've, I've, um, I don't know if, if, if you, I mean, you, the, the feedback you're talking about, it sounds lovely. Um, and I, I get, um, I'm starting to get some really lovely reviews as well. And it's, it's, um, it's, it, it really makes your day, you know, to, to feel like you've, you know, you've connected with somebody like that. Uh, it's, it's just, um, it's, it's hard to explain, isn't it? It's, it's, um, it's completely different than than having a, I don't know what you if you call it a real job, but you, you know what I mean. It's it's not it's not work no, no, when it, you when you love it. it, it honestly, you, honestly, I I wish people could feel how I feel when I'm I'm recording and I'm doing my podcast, or yeah. when, whenever I'm behind a mic or doing something that I I feel strongly about, and like I've I've learned how to edit. I've learned how to promote and people be like oh that's so much work i don't think of it as work it's it's me doing something i love it's me promoting something i love it's me trying to make something that i love even better by learning how to edit and and learning how to improve my sound quality and 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 investing in myself and investing in in quality mics and investing in proper equipment this is me wanting to get better this is me wanting to give the people that are listening to me better quality every time I come out the gate. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's great. Um, it, it is. It's 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 lovely to be able to do that, isn't it? Um, this this an adage I, I remember. And I'm not sure who said it, but I've a notion it might even be Henry Ford. I don't know, but um, basically, it's about you know if 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 you if you find something you love. Um, and you do that, you know, to, to make a living. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I don't know if if I'm going to make a living or, or um, I, I don't know if you're making a living as uh, doing the podcast. But um, if you can make a living doing something you love, the adage is that, you you know, you'll never work a day in your life <laughs> because you just enjoy what you do. So it's not work. Well, Definitely. It's, it's, uh, well, honestly, I just I just picked up my real first big client for my production company. Mm-hmm. I'm helping her launch her her YouTube channel, helping her launch her podcast. In every aspect I'm producing, I'm producing her show. And but it's not work to me. It's yeah. exciting to be able to talk to her and see when she lights up that she's so excited to get to get the program going and and get everything going. That's just like some of the best feeling you can get when you see that you're doing a great job and people are actually responding and just like just the response that I'm getting from her from the work that I'm I'm doing now and and just seeing the smile on her face like yo you've done from like she's like take she feels like she's taking her business to the next level yeah with what I'm showing her and with what I'm helping her do Oh, fantastic, man! That's that's brilliant, wise. I, I I I love I love that. That's fantastic. That's really cool. And it's it's I I love when people go and they it's like like you like you went and you wrote it like it's, like you said you you didn't think of yourself as being a, a child writing a child children's book, and you go because you felt you probably might write something more. More for to gear to adults, but yeah. here you are writing something for children and loving it and and really yeah. being able to like this is what I want. I want to be able to put this kind of joy out, this kind of energy out there, and people enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 um, I and mean, it's lovely. It's lovely the way it's happened, and um, you know, I, I wouldn't really have 
believed it would be like this maybe maybe even two years ago um it wouldn't have occurred to me that i'd be doing this um but it's it's great it's it's so nice to so nice to be doing it and i'm also really glad um like like i'm sure you are that you know there's there's a point in time where you make a decision to actually do it and 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 then as as they might say execute on that um decision and and get it done you know but but you, you you know you could have procrastinated or you could have put it off or there's a million and one things that that could have taking that decision is, is really important you know for i guess for for anyone that, that might be listening that might be having that moment where they're wondering should they they go for it i mean you know it, it's it's definitely the right decision to to do it otherwise you you'd never know and you know if if, if you never know you could really you could really miss something. You could miss your calling. You'd miss an, an awful lot of the joy that that we're talking about. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because that's how that's just like you with writing the book. It was me pressing record and finally beating the self doubt out of myself. Because it was always, oh, who would want to listen to me? I sound horrible. Oh, my voice. Because I guess to every to yourself, you always sound horrible. Like a lot of people say, yeah, I, I, I don't like the way I great. sound. <laughs> I love your voice. It's great. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. But, <laughs> but thank you. But it, it's just that um, I just, once I started talking and, and being able to express myself and being able to hear other people's story, I was like, oh man, screw what the hell I was telling myself, man. I'm going to continue to do yeah. this. I love this. Definitely. Definitely. It's, it's, um, I guess you know maybe maybe even when we're kids, you know, we're kind of conditioned to do this thing or that thing, and and um, you know, it leads you into this life of of doing whatever the you know the right thing is. Um, and I suppose it, it it's trying to find your way back to the curiosity to do the thing that that you want to do, the thing that you love, isn't it? It's it's fun, it's funny that you say that because. I'm sure the same thing as, as, as the way it's here. It's probably the same over there. You're taught, go to school, get an education, mm. get a job, work at this job for the rest of your life. And that's it. That Like, that's it. There's nothing else to it. Yeah. No, there's a lot more to it. You, you need to find your calling. You need to find what truly makes you happy. It's not all about going to find a job and, and working for someone if that's mm -hmm. your calling then hey that's fine but oh, find sure. what, what you are, find what you are meant to do find find your happiness find what yeah. makes you happy no it's, and if, it, if it's, I, I absolutely it, believe that definitely i mean 100 and 110 percent it's it's um you know you, you you get told exactly as you said you know get a job go to school get a job work away at this and, and then you'll be able to retire and then you can you know you can have fun and it's like well is that is that a life i mean your precious life is you know three quarters i want to have i want to enjoy it i want to enjoy it stuff now i want to be able to yeah, enjoy absolutely. stuff while i'm still capable like well, i want to be able yeah. to, to have fun now like why wait till i'm 60 70 80 years old to retire yeah. no no i need to enjoy my life now Every yeah, second that I'm alive, I agree, hundred percent, definitely, definitely. But yeah. this has been great, Brian. This is why I do this, man. I love speaking to people like you. But oh, now but it's time for you to time for you to plug away and let everybody know where they can find your book at, or oh, well, where's your website, everything. Okay, cool. Well, um, <clears throat> as I said at the start, you can get a free book on my website, um, and that's at Brian Frederick Author. Dot com. <clears throat> um, if you want to buy the books, um, they're on um, Amazon, Amazon.com. So um, the book that I wrote, which was meant to be the only book, that's called Siggy Loves Sausages. Um, and then there's a little origin story called When Siggy Met Phyllis. Um, that's an Amazon too, but the, the second one, When Siggy Met Phyllis, um, if you don't want to pay for it, you can get it for free on my website. Um, those are the two books. Um, if you if you do if you like either of those, um, I'm 
pretty sure I'll have another one out um, before the end of the year, and and maybe even two if um, if the fates align. You never know. Oh no, it's gonna, they're they're gonna align, man. I'm sure people are gonna love Ziggy, and <laughs> and you're gonna have to you're gonna be forced to release those other other Ziggy books. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, let's hope so. <laughs> Excellent. But again, I appreciate I appreciate you being on the show. It was great having oh, you on, man. This is awesome. It's my absolute pleasure, Wise. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. But don't don't leave yet. Let me do my shout outs, and we'll talk a little bit cool. after after the show. Yes. All right. All right. So now it's time for shout outs. Big shout out to my real Wise fan, Poppy J, Brandy J. Love you guys. Big shout out to the boss, Lady Fina. Love you, baby. I appreciate you. And as always, a big, big shout out to all the essential workers out there. God bless you. Be safe. You know how your boy Wise does it. Peace out. Thanks for listening. Listen on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, and TuneIn. Find us on social media on Twitter at Wise underscore B underscore Blunt. Instagram at Wise underscore B underscore Blunt. And a Facebook fan page, www.facebook slash Wise 76. Check back soon for new episodes. Until next time, peace out. <laughs>